Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Massimo Capocha, uh, and I am the Chief Innovation Officer at Infor. Today, we are here to uh, discuss and watch the webinar um, the, called the Enterprise Automation. And I'm here, uh, I'm here with two colleagues. Um, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Vignesh? Hey, all. This is Vignesh Subramanian. I am Vice President of Product Management with our Platform Technology Group here at Infor. Max? Hey guys, I'm Max Fisher. I'm product manager for enterprise automation. Great. So today we're going to unveil, unveil a couple of things, right? So you're going to see why we built uh, the platform called InfoOS and how we are adding the enterprise automation capabilities. But Vignes, from your perspective, what is really the core you know, pieces that we are announcing today? Yeah. So... The focus for the webinar is enterprise automation. Uh, you are going to hear everything about it. What is enterprise automation? What pillars constitute this automation? And more importantly, in this webinar, you are going to hear significant product announcements from Infor. We are launching our own RPA platform. We are launching our own document processor platform and a new API lifecycle management platform called Backend as a Service. You are going to hear about all these in this webinar. Not only that, being at the InfoNow event and seeing the customers as excited as we are, it's a real takeaway from them to see that they are also looking for more guidance from Info. So we are also going to give you the best practices on what type of processes to automate. So you will hear about that a lot in this webinar. And finally, we are going to show you how technology translates to tangible outcomes and ROI for you, our customers. So these are some of uh, you know the key factors uh, for this uh, for this webinar to look forward to. That's amazing, uh, Vignes. Uh, and um, we just actually found out with through a survey that 88% of the customers are ready really to implement these technologies as they as they saw uh, the introduction of the enterprise automation. But Max, from your perspective, you know how can uh, customers take advantage of these solutions? Uh, are we going to see anything of that? So it's not only how can, but also when can. Mm -hmm. Just like the conference says, it's available now. It's something that customers can take available now. Uh, with that in the webinar, you'll see uh, our friends from Midwest Wheel, Ring Container, and Oliver Packaging um, uh, up talking about their experience with enterprise automation and how they, how customers you know, can use this technology. That's for our inter enterprise automation offering. You know, it's all around the technology that Vignesh will in introduce, uh, the people, uh, to help you implement these things, but also, you know, that process, the, the, those are those uh, use cases, our catalog of use cases, as we say, like invoice processing, proof of delivery, automating your compliance uh, checking, uh, contract management, all these different use cases that we have, you know, almost, not, I'm not going to say out of the box, but right there that our people can help implement, to help you guys, uh, you know, get value out of your business now. And it doesn't matter, you know, if you are, in the cloud, on-prem, using a third party, you know, we're there with you. We will meet you where you guys are at. That's amazing, Max. Thanks. So I hope I hope you enjoyed the uh, the webinar, and I'll, uh, we will see um, in the Q and A later. Many businesses struggle with outdated processes and repetitive tasks, holding them back from achieving true transformative potential. They wrestle with inefficient and manual processes. Endless paperwork and repetitive tasks deplete precious time and resources, culminating in costly errors that impact productivity no, 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 and no, no, customer no, no. satisfaction. No, 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 no. Endlessly seeking solutions that integrate legacy systems and manage disparate data sources and business processes, leading to bottlenecks that hinder operational efficiency. And while they understand that scaling and agility are paramount to responding quickly to market demands, Limited workforce and manual workflows are holding them back. Start your transformation journey and tackle these challenges with a single solution. Break free and embrace the power of Infor Enterprise Automation. Years ago, I was, you know, one of my a lot of travels around the world. I was visiting visiting a lot of customers and I came to find something that profoundly changed the way I see enterprise architectures in a big way. 
And so what I found out that our customers were deploying our applications, but that was just a small set of the entire you know, blueprint of the enterprise architecture. What I found out that the customers needed all surrounding um, supporting technologies to really run those uh, applications in an end-to-end -end business process. And so what I found out then, back in the days of on-premises, that customers may buy you know, all kinds of solutions for doing BI, you know, doing uh, document management, integration, API, and workflow, and so on and so on. And what they had to do is they had to do these custom integrations with surgeries, you know, really true surgeries. The result of that, that customers got stuck in a blueprint where you couldn't really upgrade anymore because it, you, know, you go and touch and you, you get a new version of the ERP or you know, your CRM, you wouldn't dare to touch it because you would touch all this surgery and that is really a breakable architecture. You know, that's what Soma was talking about, durable architectures today. And what I found out also, because you can't upgrade, you can keep up with innovation and you're just stuck in the past, right? And when Infor decided to move all the workloads in the cloud, and we decided to give you every month an update, yeah, we had to have a very good architecture to make sure that we wouldn't break these things. But first of all, we believed, and I believe, that we should really support you and give you these functionalities out of the box to you so that you wouldn't be worrying about all these supporting services. And that's why we have built what we call today InfoOS, right? Now, while you could go and buy these capabilities a la carte, you can do that today, even in the cloud, you, can, you have choice. But then every time the upgrade comes, every time you want to do a project, then you're not agile enough to do this project that we're saying like in six weeks because you have to do all these stitches together yourself. These integrations, these interfaces, we have done it for you, that, and it's hard work. But the powerful of this technology solution is the union of all these technologies integrated all together. And so when we build and come with a new technology, you're gonna see Gen AI and today, you know, auto enterprise automation, we just need to focus on building that piece because the other pieces, we have it, and they are all integrated in one go, right? So that is where our secret sauce is there. And talking about secret sauce, you know, in a good Italian way, you don't want spaghetti architecture, spaghetti is good in the kitchen, but not in software architectures, right? So you want more lasagna, like a good layered based, you know, architecture. The first thing, remember, and integration APIs, you have to have your applications in your infrastructure speaking to each other. We made possible with during, do, using business object documents, a standard model, we made it possible to have applications to speak the same languages. When an order goes from an Infor application to a warehouse management application at Infor, they can recognize, they can speak to each other. It's, it has been a massive work. That doesn't go only from an integration perspective. We believe that, that the user experience has to be you know, uniform in, for all the personas or for all the roles. So you get one URL, one single sign-on, one portal where you log in and based on your role, you can access the, uh, in, uh, the applications and the information that you need to, uh, to execute your job. Not only security and single sign-on, it can be integrated with your security model that you have in your you know, Azure AD, which is the most popular, right? And also the roles and the permissions as well. So, and that is propagated not only in the application, but if the data leaves the application and goes to an infrastructure like the data lake, we are making sure that, that our security is respected. The same if you would invoke an API, that security is also respected, right? So that is where you get when you have the union and the integration of all this integration of these services. Finally, if you compose a cloud suite, which is a, you know, a set of multiple applications, we didn't know back then that we were doing that. We were doing because we believe in a cloud suite, in an end-to-end -end business process. But essentially, we were doing a composition, right? What the analyst world today call, you know, 
a, in application composition as a solution composition. So we were already doing that because we can take different applications from Info and compose that for, with an industry cloud platform. But to do that, we didn't want also to have an API, a user experience, a security. We wanted to make sure that you had a single point to access the data. And that's why we build the data lake. So you have all the history, all the versions, and all the transactions. You point to the data lake, and you can do not only the classical use cases like reporting analytics, but you can start to use to do, for, to do AI, automation, process mining, and so on and so on. So when we build this foundation, now we figure it out, okay, now we have the foundation, we have composed the cloud suite, we have this uniform behavior, now we can start to build the high value services, right? So the high value services, that is really when it gives you what we believe it will give you the next level optimization. Today an ERP is built to, with al static algorithm, you know, in the 80s, 90s, you know, MRP, this, you know, it's just, it exists for a long time. But those algorithms, they just work on very little set of data that you have in ERP. Now with the AI technology and with the cloud technology, with the data, the opportunity is to get to a level of optimization that is going, it, it will go even beyond, right? And that's really our passion to get to that level and really prove it in the industry that we can do it and together. So we did the machine learning. We also did a digital assistant. And this is going to be a fundamental service in the future because today the digital assistant you know, you just go on the, any website or even our digital system, you ask a question, there is an API behind, it will give you an answer. But still as a static thing, now with Gen AI, you will see that this, this world of digital assistant and generic AI is going to bring us to the next level. So it's not just not only calling an API, it's going to bring wisdoms of documents, you know, data lake, you know, applications, um, Everything that you can, you know, train and learn is going to bring that in one single experience, very simple, like the um, digital assistant. In 2017, we bought Burst Analytics, and with the intention and the vision to have one single platform for analytics and reporting. And now we are embedding Burst in the InfoOS core architecture, and you're going to see with the Lakehouse project and with, you know, with the front end, with the workspaces, Burst is going to, you know, the soul and the IP of Burst is going to live into all these new technologies. It's going to be an amazing journey that we're going to go for analytics. And finally, extensibility. You know, we talked about that. You know, we have uh, a Mongoose platform, which you can build your own applications today. And we're expanding these capabilities with a new app designer where you can build widgets for the new workspace. But you're going to be able to build also forms and apps as well. And the last thing that I want to talk about, which is very important to, to remember, risk and compliance. You know, we have capabilities today available now where you can you know, monitor for segregation of duties. You know, can Massimo create a PO and approve the same PO? Or we can monitor transactions. Is Massimo in or using always his favorite vendor from Sicily, right? So that's maybe not good, so we need to monitor that. But in the future, Having AI at the core of any business process or automation, which we're going to talk about today, who is going to monitor that from compliance, right? So risk and compliance for us is not only a platform to do the classical use cases. You're going to see a feature. Or you're going to see risk and compliance evolving on monitoring the execution of AI and the decision of AI. And it's going to go into, you know, the law is not ready today. Even in Europe, is not ready today. So, but having a platform that can monitor those decisions is very valuable for the business. So, augmented intelligence. The last thing that, that uh, we are announcing today, it is enterprise automation. And to do that, I have a colleague, Vignes, that is going to talk about that. He's going to go through all the details. Thank you, Massimo. Great recap of where we started and where we are. And I'm here to tell you where we are headed. So let's jump right into the world of automation, right? Automation is generally classified in three categories. Right? First, we have the system-to-system -system backend automation. 
you create a requisition in your asset system, it needs to be automatically converted to a purchase order in your ERP. Where two systems talk to each other, Infor is very strong there. We have highly mature platform leading in several analyst quadrants. We have Ion, which is our asynchronous platform. We have API Gateway, which is our API management platform. And to augment our API story, today we are launching Backend as a Service. <clears throat> that is a new platform to build your own APIs. And you leave the headache of how to host that APIs with us. You as developers just focus on building the business logic on what the API should do. We provide managed storage, managed compute, and managed execution. If we need to power up that API to service a billion API calls in a month, we will scale up. And if there is no traffic to your API, we will scale down. You can build your own API. You can expose it to your ecosystem, your dealers, your customers, thereby making an API economy of your own. So this is a pretty important announcement in our uh, backend automation story called backend as a service. Then we move on to decision-centric automation. If a device is sending stress signals before it conks off, you sense that something is going wrong through AI, automatically generate a maintenance request, a service engineer goes on the spot and fixes it. That is decision automation, augmented intelligence, our machine learning platform, highly mature deep learning models. So we have a strong story there. Infor is a pioneer in this field. We are good there. The last pillar of automation, the front-end automation, or the labor-centric automation, where the software bots need to mimic human behavior, need to visit websites, screen scraping data, uh, you know, creating uh, forms and doing things in other places and so on. That is the world of RPA. And we are very proud and very happy to announce that Infor has our own in-house RPA launching today. So, thank you. With that, Infor becomes, as far as I know, the only enterprise software vendor with in-house IPaaS, AI, and RPA, really making us a 360-degree enterprise automation platform. So that's the technology part. Now we are talking about tangible outcomes. Technology is great when we are able to deliver tangible outcomes. So this is our mantra for today, technology, process, people. That's our mantra, and enterprise automation subscribes to the same mantra. We have the tools, and we also are creating a content catalog for you with all template business processes, like invoice processing, pick list processing, bill of lading processing, returning your items, and whatnot. Right? So we have rich content catalog so that from the day one, you hit the road running. Right? And then, finally, we also have qualified industry knowledge-based innovation support services where our own services personnel will come and help you implement those catalog you know, realizing the value in a very quick time, like 30 days. So that's our mantra, as I said, technology, process, people, and enterprise automation is really, you know, living up to that same spirit. Now, why should you care about all this? All this is nice, it's all theoretical concept, right? So why should you as a customer care about this enterprise automation? So that integrations and automations are not a flash in the pan. Those are bread and butter technology needs every customer has. And 80% of our customers, they are saying they will either sustain or increase their investment in the area of automation. It, the statistics is coming from Gartner. So this is an ongoing area of nurturing and development. right? So it's not something you can ignore and pick it up when there is a need. It is an ongoing process. Second metric for you. 66% of our customers out of a pool of 300 who are being interviewed say that the main barrier for adoption of automation is the lack of connectivity to their current landscape. That's very obvious, isn't it? Some of your applications are very mature. They have APIs. Some of your applications are legacy. There is no APIs, but they do that one good job that they are meant to do very well. No need to change them. Then you need a technology like RPA to manually log in into that application, get the information you want, use it, anywhere else that you need. So there you see, having only one type of automation is not enough. You need to have a plethora of choices at your disposal. Last metric for you, again, out of the pool of 300 customers interviewed by Gartner, 64% of them say that the biggest barrier for adoption is the skills gap. Their workforce is always not capable of adopting all these cool technologies. And that's why we have our qualified 
you know, intelligent services people who can come and do the job for you, right? The other reason why automation always does not deliver the results that you need is because I have seen in my experience, customers often choose wrong type of processes to automate. So we have watched it from the wings. We have made it easy and simple for you. We have a simple playbook for you, what type of processes to automate. Here you go. The processes that you want to automate needs to have well-defined triggers, like an incoming invoice, an employee joining your company, an item that needs to be returned. These are business events which triggers the process. So you need to have well-defined triggers. Number two, you should have very good entry criteria and exit criteria for your process, unambiguous. For example, if you take the OIG vendor checklist compliance use case, the input is a set of potential, file, potential vendors that needs to be blocked, and the output is that the status of those vendors is changed to blocked. If you are talking about invoice processing, the input is a bunch of invoice PDFs, the output is that they are matched and created in your ERP. So there should be unambiguous input and output criteria defined for your process. Think of it more like a one-line storyline for a movie, right? That is essential. Number three is rule-based, which is the screenplay for a movie. I have this funny story always. Let's say a very logical thinking person. Let's say a software engineer is going shopping. His wife tells him, buy two cans of milk. If you see eggs, buy a dozen. This person goes shopping, picks up two cans of milk. Next aisle, there are eggs, goes back to the milk shelf, picks up a dozen of milk. Hey, you said, buy milk. If you see eggs, buy a dozen. That's what I did, right? <laughs> Software works the same way, actually. You need to be really as explicit as you can, like how you teach to a baby. Those were the days where we come from. Last but not least, you should only automate those processes which are highly recurrence in nature. They are frequently happening. Else, you cannot justify the investment you make on building your automation, right? So there you go. Your mantra for what type of processes to automate, the process should have well-defined triggers, have clear input criteria and output criteria, have very good rules that define the process, and last but not the least, they should be highly voluminous, right? Typically, the low-value, high-volume tasks, perfect for automation, right? So that's our playbook for you. So hopefully, that's a takeaway that you walk out of this room that you know, we are not only visionaries in product side, on the technology side, we are also thought leaders on giving you the best practices on what type of processes to automate, right? Now, again, I'm painting a rosy picture, but let's see, you know, let's put uh, our mouth where the money is, right? So let, let me give you a live example of whatever I'm talking about. Let's look into the world of invoice processing, right? So we have tried it with a few of our customers, and the Improvement in productivity and efficiency is 72% of automating this versus doing it manually. If that doesn't convince you, let me throw another number at you. The potential savings of invoice processing is a whopping $193,000 of automating it versus doing it manually. It's typically simply the labor cost, if not anything else. The labor cost is a significant chunk that you can save by automating such processes. So let's deep dive into the single use case of invoice processing. Let me give you an example of how that looks before automation, and let's see how it looks after automation, live, right? Basically, the normal sequence goes like this. The invoice comes in, typically through mail or whatever, and then you have your finance department who are basically manually capturing the invoice information from the PDF. They are then manually itemizing and checking if it matches with the purchase order, and if everything is okay, they create their invoice in the ERP, released for payment. Right? So that's the classical manual process, which still many of our customers do. But guess what? The problem is the volume. Even SMB customer on a daily basis, they get hundreds of invoices to pay to their suppliers. If you're a Tire 1 customer, the number of invoices that you need to process per day could be in thousands. I'm not exaggerating. We have really seen it customers with volumes like this. So then we talk about automating the whole stuff with our automation platform. Whatever steps that you see in red can easily be automated using or RPA. At least RPA is the trigger which starts off the whole process. And as in the world of automation, the process can be either triggered or it can be scheduled. In other words, it could be either unattended, which is in the scheduled mode, or it could be in an attended mode where you really uh, you know, trigger it on demand. So here you go. That's our RPA platform. You trigger that process on demand, and then 
let's see how that automation process is really laid out for you uh, in a sequence. Uh, maybe I, yeah, there you go. In the automation step, the first step is triggered by RPA, where it brings the supplier information from the incoming input channels, which would be email or PDF or could be directly uploaded e files. The problem is, again, invoices come in all shapes and sizes. You see the formats are different. The invoice number can be called as invoice ID in one or INV hash in another PDF. So the challenge is really to understand the key value pairs that you need. Regardless of how they are called, you want to extract them in a correct manner, and that's where we apply AI. So then using AI, regardless of how it is called, you can always extract the key parameters like the invoice ID, customer ID, amount, date, all that is captured. And then let's see the second step is normally you need to go and read all the line items, which is where the problem comes, because the line items are normally not well formatted in the PDF. There are some carriage returns. The printer format, uh, or left end or right end, it's not good. So now what we do, instead of reading it from the file, we actually query the ERP, hey, of all the unmatched receipt lines, give me all the items that have been unmatched yet. So we go to ERP, we get the item ID, the unit price, and the amount. With that, then we have our own machine learning platform. And that's where we take it to the next level. Instead of reading everything from the PDF, we only read the necessary information from the PDF, and then we use our AI platform to do the distribution of price amount. This is a cool original way of how we are really practicing enterprise automation. Typically, what should have been read from the PDF? We are asking our AI platform to you know, finish the puzzle. Basically, the input is the header information from PDF and the unmatched information coming from ERP. With that, we make a quest for the optimizer in our AI platform, and with that, AI is pretty powerful to the proper distribution, and you see that coming up right there, and then the results of what are the itemized amounts are coming up on your screen in a minute right there, there you go. So AI does the calculation for you instead of reading from the PDF and distributes the amount automatically. This is our secret sauce, very unique to the way of how we are approaching this problem compared to the industry, and then now we have all the information we need we can go ahead and create that invoice in the ERP. But guess what? Again, the incoming information from our AI platform is in one format, while this could be in a different format. So you need an iPaaS platform, which can consume that information, call an ERP API, create that invoice, and in that process, do the additional transformation that is needed and so on. So we bring the aspect of iPaaS into our automation framework, right? And then finally, the invoice is created, like you see here. All well, and then for compliance reasons, we store the same soft copy of that PDF in our IDM system, and you go back to your ERP. When you select your purchase order in context, you see your attachment, right? And when everything is done nicely, you send a final confirmation back to the concerned division saying the invoice is successfully created, right? So that it goes, if it ends in a failure, then the notification says the invoice creation failed for whatever reason. So what we are giving you is not tools. What we are giving you is not RPA. What we are giving you is not uh, a unique, uh, you know, one technology. So what you just saw here is basically RPA kicking it off, um, our AI platform doing the distribution of line items for you, our iPaaS platform taking that and creating the invoice in the ERP, our IDM system, which is keeping track of the document that was stored, in context showing that in our ERP, which is our great user experience in context that you can experience firsthand, and finally sending a notification that either it succeeded or failed, right? So this is enterprise automation for me. The problem is simple, invoice process creation, but in reality, actually, in order to do it automate end-to-end, -end, we have all the tools you need in-house, right? Hopefully that convinced you, but if not, I'm going to call my uh, colleague Max, who can really you know, back me up and give some live examples of how it is to be done at our customer site. So Max, take it away. Thank you, Vignesh. Hey, guys, I'm Max Fisher. I'm a product manager for Enterprise Automation. And I'm up here to show you that Enterprise Automation is here now. And I want to show you how we're doing it now and how your companies
can find value in enterprise automation. Massimo kind of took you through the journey of how we got to today. Vignesh took you through kind of the tools we have there and how an example of how we can use it. But I'm here to talk about, you know, how are you guys going to use it in the field? How are you going to use it to find outcomes in your business? Vignesh showed this uh, awesome circle graph we had earlier, talking about the technologies. You know, we have the technology, the process, and the people. And I represent the content catalog here, that library you see right in the middle. These are use cases. These are problems that we found working with Innovation Showcase customers, working with all of y'all. Um, and we've come up with these solutions, and we've solved them. And I'd offer with you guys as part of enterprise automation. Problems like invoice processing, proof of delivery, compliance checklist, automating your customer creation, persona workspaces. And all these is part of our content catalog. And this list is growing and growing alongside you guys. You know, we're listening to customers, listening to different manual tasks you guys have, manual processes you have, and adding to this content catalog. And as this thing grows, we're able to offer you more and more. And so we're taking from our communities and helping out more customers. And so you're probably thinking, am I ready for this? Is this something that my business is ready for? I'm going through a go live. You know, I've got all these different things going on. I've got to work with support issues. You know, is it, am, I, am I really ready? for automation, and that's the awesome thing here. All you need is M4S in the cloud. Multi-tenant M4S. The foundation, we do want you in the cloud suite, we do want everything in the cloud, your ERP in the cloud, but that's not necessary. You can also have a third party application, maybe a legacy system that you want to you know, automate on outside of N4, or if you're still on-prem, maybe you're moving to the cloud and you want to get some manual processes out of the way. Maybe it helps you get to the cloud. You know, we will meet you where you are at. Wherever you are, we're there with you. And so if you're still thinking, you know, I've seen a demo, Mac is up here talking about it, you know, is enterprise automation really now? It is now. I'm going to bring up a couple companies to show you that it is now and what we've been doing with a lot of our Innovation Showcase customers. So the first company I want to, I want to bring up and I want to share a little bit about, they have really embodied this conference. You see those, those three I's, the integrate, innovate, iterate. This customer, distribution customer, went up to the cloud and they started adopting AI, product recommender use case, some anomaly detection, right? They innovated. Well, now you gotta iterate. You gotta go for the next one. What's the next one we can do with them? What's the next thing? And so enterprise automation's here. Let's look at invoice processing. Let's look at proof of delivery. And so with that, I want to share a short video of one of our Innovation Showcase customers, so please do enjoy. We sell a lot of semi-truck parts. We sell a lot of light truck accessories. Customers come to us because of the quality products we have. So the latest addition we've brought in from the N4 suite is N4 RPA. Prior to bringing in an RPA, we didn't have one solution for our proof of deliveries for customers. Our outside team was talking about up to two hour delays to get proof of delivery when a customer wanted it in for RPA. It gives us the ability to digitize pick lists from our customer pickup counter to really complete a process. We were already getting electronic signatures for our deliveries, but we were missing was the last piece of those pickup documents because they were still physical. Those physical documents are very difficult to go in and hand key, index them, put them into the system. So really what happened is they turn into a pile of boxes in the corner that when someone called you went digging for it. And we leveraged N4OS and they, the open APIs with our delivery solution methodology through N4OS to put everything in one place. We have thousands of proof of deliveries centralized online in the N4 document management system. Automatically, robot doing the work, API is doing the work. It's one solution that works for the whole team. When someone calls our parts counter to check on an order, get proof of delivery, they don't even hang up the phone. They, in their context app, they can look at the relevant proof of delivery that goes with the order they're displaying in the business system right there while they're on the phone. When you do the same process with our outside sales team, they have an Infor document management mobile application where they can key up that same order number and they can write their email it to the customer while they're still talking. Now we have a solution that works for all and gives a 99% improvement to our parts counter service time for when someone wants a proof of delivery. And so with that, I know he's probably, you know, right before this, working on the next use case to, to innovate and to iterate. Uh, I would like to bring up Steve McNanny. There we go. 
Come on up, Steve. I believe you've got a career in, in acting as well uh, as, uh, at Midwest Wheel. Been on a couple of videos. Um, if, if you guys haven't seen it, we're on West, We Supply America just this past month as well, so it was a nice video. But our team's always looking to do the next thing, the next thing to be there for the customer and to, to drive the next thing. So we just saw the AP automation. We're, we're doing that piece. We're doing proof of delivery. We're doing the AI um, product recommenders. So really embrace the technology, looking for the next thing. Perfect. Thank you so much, Steve. You stand up here for a second. Uh, the next company I want to bring up, if you guys have any kids in schools, especially over COVID, that took home any packaged meals, you know, had a juice cup there, or if you got any, uh, you know, parents or grandparents in adult care facilities, you know, how they get fed every single day and how they get safely fed and securely fed. Um, this customer has been using enterprise automation you know, to help those, ensure those communities are getting fed. And so I'd like to bring up to the stage Sarah Patrick from Oliver Packaging. Come on up, Sarah. Perfect. So Sarah, please tell the audience, you know, what does enterprise automation mean to Oliver Packaging? For us, it is streamlining the technology that Infor provides us so that we can work on complicated processes and making them simpler so we don't have the errors that a human will make because the AI is so much smarter, so much faster, and it's instantaneous versus me that might take hours. It is amazingly faster, quicker, and easier. Thank you so much, Sarah. And if you would stick up here. Now, I've got one more. I'm not going to bring 100 up here. So this company, uh, you know, personally, I got in touch with them. They, uh, they've helped me out a lot in my caloric intake growing up. I've got an older brother, and I think they supplied uh, and the reason he actually got fed and got enough calories. You know, when you're hungry late at night and you're going to your pantry going, you know, what am I going to grab? You know, I need something quick. I need something good. And you go grab for that jar of peanut butter, you know, get the whole full spoonful, probably have two or three. Uh, you flip over that jar, it probably says this company's name on the bottom of it, all right? They're the reason that those things are in my pantry and they get there safely and securely. And so with that, I want to bring up Jaime Zepeda from Ring Container. And so Jaime, I'm going to ask you the same question. You know, what does enterprise automation mean to Ring? Enterprise automation means that Ring Container is able to deliver stronger, faster, and lighter IT solutions to real business needs. And that's what enterprise automation means to Ring Container. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jaime. If you'd stand up here just for another second. You know, think about those manual processes that you have in your business today. Like Vignesh had mentioned, those uh, processes that have defined triggers, have an input and output, that are rule-based, have a lot of recurrence. Think about those use cases there, and you can come to us with them. You know, we want to help you guys automate and help you get those manual tasks out of your business. And with that, Enterprise Automation is now. <laughs> Thank you all so much. Thanks for uh, watching the, the webinar. I hope that it was very informative for you. Um, it's really very exciting from an info perspective what we are launching. And to summarize that bigness, what is really very exciting about our enterprise automation capabilities? Yeah, there are a few that I'm really excited about. Uh, first and foremost, the way how we are completing our automation portfolio is really a very exciting uh, aspect. As far as I can see, Infor is the only enterprise vendor who offer in-house tools for the system-to-system backend integration automation, as well as the decision-centric AI-based automation, as well as the labor-centric front-end RPA-based automation. So if you look mm -hmm. at all these three pillars, we are the only enterprise software vendor with in-house tools. That's really a great um, reassuring um, uh, aspect for our customers because in one it's one stop shop with info that they get solution for all their automation needs second of all it's our vision of how we are democratizing the innovation our vision is that innovation should be a level playing field it's not just meant for large customers with a large it department but every customer of info big or small 
should be able to take advantage of the innovations we deliver. And we not only give them the tools, we also give them the content library. We also give them the right people that assist them in implementing these innovations. So how our vision comes through in that enterprise automation strategy is really exciting for me as well. That's amazing, uh, Vignes, and thanks. And so, Max, Vignes was talking about customers, right? So, and not only larger customers, smaller customers, essentially every everyone, right? So we have seen in the webinar, you know, all these customers that took advantage of the enterprise automation as an early adopter. I was blown away about the duration and the cycle of the project. You know, to me, it's very exciting. You know, what do you think about that? And so it's it's all what N4OS is all about. You know, there's three I's, the, mm -hmm. uh, the integrate, the innovate, and the iterate. Key emphasis on that iterate. You know, we want uh, customers, you know, to be able to create a solution and then create another one. Find more value, more value. It's almost like very sticky. Once you have a little bit, you want more and more and more and more. And so with that, you know, how everything in M4S is all kind of, you know, compacted together, you're able to create solutions and go to market and have value in your business very quickly. You'll, you'll see, uh, you know, you saw from Steve McKinney at that uh, Midwest Wheel. Mm -hmm. That delivery solution was only six to eight weeks. Wow. And he's on to the next use case. He's on to the next use case. Awesome. And so the big thing there is the speed of delivery you're able to have, but then also you're able to do more as well. And so on to that next use case. What's that third use case? What's that fourth use case? Yeah. That's awesome. So Max, if a customer wants today wants to start, right? So with you know with enterprise automation, uh, what 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 can they do? So our, our enterprise automation team is always eager, you know, either to help you guys understand more about enterprise automation or help you, you know, get solutions in your hand. Uh, the first step, uh, n4.com has got a great page on enterprise automation. It also shows the invoice processing use case that Vignesh just went over, uh, demo end to end. Um, and as well, you know, if you really want to get started with it, how do I take my next step for my business? Shoot an email out to innovations at n4.com. And we will, we will get right back to you and help you take care of some enterprise automation needs. Wow, awesome. Thanks for having, thanks guys for the, the webinar and thanks uh, for watching uh, for the customers and prospects to, to have watched the, uh, the webinar and see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, peace.